uh, thank you everybody to having the time to listen to me. I hope I will not be boring you with my, my talk, but uh, this is an interesting subject for me and I hope it will be for everyone attending the lecture. Uh, so um, I will just start with the, the quote uh, or the vision of the global strategy for plant conservation. Uh, when they say, uh, without plants, there is no life and the functioning of the planet and our survival depends on plants. The global strategy for plant conservation seeks to hold the continuing loose of plant diversity. And uh, this is what I'm starting off to just introduce you how important is the plants to the, to the, to the, to the, the whole globe. Uh, so my presentation will be, uh, I'll give a, a quick summary about the plant conservation, what is it and why it is important, then about the botanic garden and their role in conserving plants. I will then talk more in more detail about Amman flora and vegetation and specifically what, uh, about what we are doing at Amman Botanic Garden. So what is plant conservation as a, a botanic garden conservation international and define the plant conservation as plant is a broad group of activities which aims to prevent plants from becoming extinct, which includes the direct conservation of wild population, collection of plants, and gardens, education program, innovation, invasive species control, and many other activities that is involved within a plant conservation subject. Uh, so why just why, why how, how does the conservation of plants looks like around us? And if you, if you see from the figure about 21% of those plants are currently threatened within extension and only 7% of known plants have actually been assessed. So these 21% is only from seven plants of the known plants and over 1000 new plants is discovered every day, every year uh, around the globe. Uh, the other fact is that the funding of plant conservation does not get the same attention as that for animal conservation for many reasons uh, that maybe I'll, I will not go in detail uh, now about it. Um, so why do we need to conserve plants? There's many threats to, to, to our plants uh, and mainly is the biodiversity loss as part of the plant diversity. And the main five pressures for to lose uh, these biodiversity is the habitat loss and change, overexploitation, pollution, uh, problems of invasive alien species, and also the climate change, which result in decrease in ecosystem services from this uh, diversity. Also, the huge lack in public awareness about wild plants and the need to conserve them, as we are taking the the wild plants uh, uh, for granted that. We don't know the importance of them. So this is one of the big issues that threatening our plants. Uh, so uh, maybe in a, a quick definition of a, a botanic garden, uh, and this is the most used definition for a garden is, uh, it is a place that holds a documented collection of living plants for the purpose of uh, research and conservation and also for display and education for the public. Um, According, according to the latest report, uh, uh, over, there is over 3,000 botanical collection in about 180 countries around the world. And the role of botanic gardens have been changing since the beginning of the, uh, of the concept of, uh, of uh, botanic gardens uh, from 70s and 80s. And the main role of the botanic garden in plant conservation is uh, research and development. And this is from plant identification, taxonomy, ecology, genetics, and trying to identify the useful par parts of the, of the plants and also developing the, all the propagation and cultivation methods for plants that never been cultivated in gardens. Uh, all the information that comes with it and the, the importance of it, especially uh, uh, in, the, in the face of the climate change and the, all the threats that have been faced by, by, by the people. So uh, research and development is an essential for species recovery programs and reintroduction of plants into the wild. Also, the botanic garden is a is a place for the where, where you can find the seed banks and living collections, and these are collection of species that been organized on a specific grouping uh, 
And this will help in maintaining the genetic diversity that support many activities in conservation and research. For that, it allows for species to be, to, to, to be safeguarded and to be reintroduced maybe in the future. Also linking the, the botanic garden is linking plants to the well-being of people and helping encourage the sustainable use of plant resources to conserve the indigenous and local knowledge uh, to the benefit of everyone as part of a, a sustainable development. Uh, also the, 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 the most important or the most strength of a botanic garden is the education um, uh, that, that allows it to communicate the scientific data uh, and the importance of conserving plants to the public in a much simple and easy way which will help hopefully in a fundamental behavior change, change for the community. Also, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the many uh, reasons why we are building Botanic Garden is the, to be part of uh, conservation planning and management uh, locally and globally, and to work with government and other organization uh, uh, to, to build and to, uh, uh, to manage and to have a national biodiversity strategies and action plans. Um, so, uh, um, uh, what is about plant of Oman and why it is important and uh, why do we need a botanic garden in Oman? Uh, so, I'll, I'll take briefly here, talk briefly here about the flora and vegetation in the country and why it is special. As you know, Oman is uh, getting the the location of Amman uh, and the phytogeography in the region is a mix of plants from Asia and also from Africa that make this place in the country is a special place for plant that getting uh, the climate and the, uh, the topography and all other environmental factors that uh, help uh, uh, shaping the, the, the plants and the plant land diversity in, the, in Oman. Uh, for Oman, in Oman, we have a rich flora of about 1,400 species uh, uh, with high degree of endemism. Uh, we have about uh, 91 endemic species, 56 near endemic, and 74 regionally endemic species with 84 rare and threatened species with many other species that are still now under description and under discovery. Uh, uh, we can divide Oman into three main uh, local center for diversity and endemism. And these are the Northern Mountains uh, uh, presented from Musandam and Hajar Mountains that hosts about 700 species. Uh, a mountain ecosystem is a unique, uh, uh, a unique system for the plant diversity in the country. Um, also Central Oman is the second uh, the eastern part and the southern part of the uh, central Oman, uh, which was around 300 species in uh, Jadat al Harasis, for example, and Hukuf Escarpment here in this image, and also in Jadat al Arkad and Sahel Jazir with uh, about 133 species. Uh, central Oman, it has a very diverse, even if it is a harsh and hard environment to the plants, but it is one of the most diverse. Uh, diverse uh, plants, the, uh, most of the plant diversity found in, in the central deserts. Southern Oman, of course, uh, getting the, uh, the uh, monsoonal effect for three months in the year while the rest of the country is hot uh, and uh, humid. Uh, the southern mountain having the effect of the, uh, of the monsoon of uh, cloud and fog is that uh, that's make the uh, the far mountains uh, a unique uh, a, a unique uh, ecosystem for plants. Um, uh, southern Oman, like in, in here for Jebel Al Qamar and Jebel Al Qara, having about 66, 60, 160 species, and uh, also the uh, Jebel Samhan, which is a, a bit drier uh, area of the south that doesn't hit by monsoon, having about 377 species with most of the plants that are endemic or regional endemic in these regions. Also, the, the southern part of Oman considered uh, as a part of Horn of Africa by diversity hotspots. This is not a good thing for, for the southern area. This is, uh, uh, yes, it is uh, considered uh, by diversity hotspots. But also, uh, that means that over 70% of the original vegetation has been destroyed in these regions. And for that, it has been uh, defined as a, a hotspot. 
So why do we need a botanic garden in Oman? Uh, in the Middle East, you have around 60,000 native plant species. Uh, uh, and uh, very few Arabian plants are really in botanic gardens. Maybe this is the first uh, botanic garden with many uh, other, which is really being announced to be under construction also. Oman and also Oman has, as I said, Oman has a rich and unique uh, botanical heritage that deserve to be shared with the rest of the world. Uh, his Majesty uh, Sultan Qaboos has his vision and his love for the environment. For that, he came with the idea of building a botanic garden in Oman. And from his vision and translation of his vision and uh, to, to a real world for the, for the Oman and Oman people, uh, we started to build the Oman Botanic Garden. And uh, the vision for us is that uh, it's, a, it's a garden from the people to the people. So uh, the garden will be, uh, the vision for, for, for the garden is people to be inspired to conserve and cherish the biodiversity and botanical heritage of Oman, and also to contribute toward the sustainable future for the country. Our mission, our mission is to discover, cultivate, and showcase products, Oman unique plant diversity, and also the ethnobotanical through the display and uh, research and engaging com community. Uh, in, in this uh, events. Uh, the garden uh, have certain guiding principles that guide us through our work from collection to research to uh, educational program through display. These guiding principles are exploration and scientific discovery. Aman is, uh, uh, is like, um, what can I say? It's a, a unique uh, uh, untouch. Still, many many parts of Oman is still un untouched and wait for someone to just uh, 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 explore it and discover it. Also, conservation and uh, as you see from the image, maybe uh, yeah, one of the most dangerous uh, uh, under threat uh, trees, the uh, dragon blood trees, uh, with many roads that have been built in the country, also. Uh, uh, affecting our environment and our plants. So this is one of the guiding principles for the garden. Education and learning, uh, the most important thing that guide uh, our work in the, in the garden. Sustainability, as we are trying our best to uh, uh, use uh, sustainable energy, um, uh, trying to apply many um, sustainable methods and program within our work uh, in the garden authenticity and trying to link to the uh, knowledge and our origin uh, through our display uh, for the people. And uh, during all of our work, we are seeking the excellence in everything, in every step that we do. And uh, we are recording everything since the beginning until the display for the, for the people. And maybe I'll talk more about this later in my presentation. Uh, capacity building, we have been through uh, a huge learning curve since uh, the beginning of the garden in 2006. And we learned a lot uh, from scratch. We don't know anything about plants until now we, we reach to a high stage of knowledge and skill, people within the garden. Um, uh, our display and our plants, uh, in order to reach to the people and to the public, uh, each one of us need to be related to 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 something, and if you if you didn't find that link, then you cannot make that relation. You cannot uh, you cannot uh, get your message to the public. So you need to be relevant in your uh, display and in your program to the to the community. Doing all of this with full enjoyment and uh, when enjoying every step that we are doing here in the garden, and this is one of the, our earlier uh, field trips trying to explore uh, the sand deserts uh, in Rub al-Khali. Um, so where to start? Uh, Oman Botanic Garden is about native plants. The vision is to have all the Omani plants within one place under one umbrella in one location. So as you know, Oman is really uh, uh, have a wide range of habitats from sand desert, which very few species, to the southern part of the country with about 70% diversity found there, like 700 species maybe. Uh, so as you said, we need to start from the scratch. Uh, we cannot just go and get our plants from any place. 
we need to go and look for these plants. We need to find, we need to plan for our field trips, the right season to collect seeds or any plant materials. So we have been planning, we've been uh, going through thousands of field trips from Musandam to the, uh, to the south, from the north to the south of Oman in order to get all the plants. So we have been traveling by land, by air, and also by boat in order to reach to all location in the country. Uh, we, are, we are mainly collecting seeds and cuttings. Uh, also we're collecting herbarium vouchers. Uh, um, uh, this is another library for our plants. And uh, with this also the ethnobotany, and this is the knowledge that is hidden within our people uh, in isolated villages in Oman. So we have a, a, a very brilliant team that has been going through uh, and visiting many villages in Oman, small isolated villages in the mountains, in the wadis, and in different locations in the country to, in order to capture this knowledge uh, with the local community and uh, document it uh, uh, in a huge database. Uh, this is one of the images after collecting one of the uh, wheat species, uh, the, one of the wild relative species, uh, and try to propagate it and cultivate it in, in our nurseries in the garden. Also, doing field work, it's not easy, really. Uh, it's, uh, as I said, it is, it is challenging, uh, ch challenging for, for the team. Uh, we've been through many uh, uh, thunderstorms that were stuck in the middle. Uh, you need to climb mountains, steep mountains, in order to get specific plant species. Uh, uh, you know, Oman is hot, so uh, many of our field trips is uh, during uh, collection is, is hot, and you need to find a shade place in order to get a bit of rest after a long day of collection. Uh, also, we are sometimes facing some dangers, <laughs> like snakes and uh, uh, in the far the labor, if you are camping in the middle of the mountains, you don't know what will happen. So you need to make sure that you are safe. But it, it's fun anyway. It's it's fun to do this. Uh, with all of this, we are uh, making sure that we finish our work on the day of collection. This is our, uh, the team uh, while they recording our and pressing our herbarium voucher. So the, we start uh, uh, as long as it take day and night in order to finish and to keep. Uh, uh, records of everything that we collect. It's really rewarding. Uh, since the beginning, we discovered around 25 new species, and we have, we added around 200 new records to the, list of the uh, documented plant of uh, After that uh, long days in the field trip, uh, we get, we go back to the nursery, and uh, our seeds will go to the seed bank. Uh, and the seeds will go through seed cleaning, uh, processing, uh, checking if they are free of insects. Uh, we are counting our seeds in order to make sure how much we collect. And uh, this is uh, 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 because, as I said, this is the first to be done, collecting the native plants of the country. So we need to keep record of everything we do. Um, we count, we weight the seeds. And we record everything. We have uh, uh, we have the BG base, uh, the Botanic Garden database, which keep record of our seeds collection, for example, here. And uh, this recording, what species we collect, from where, who collected, number of seeds, the method uh, of cleaning, and how we are going to how we are going to store these plants. Uh, e each species will be stored temporarily in a, uh, an in a AC room until they are ready to be sent for propagation. And each, uh, uh, as you see here, each envelope will get a barcode and an accession number. And this accession, accession number will link to, it's like an ID for the, for the species that link with it everything about it uh, from the uh, location until it is planted in the garden. And this is our temporary seed bank, uh, the short-term seed bank. Uh, each habitat or each area will be uh, coded in, in a different box. Uh, also during, uh, uh, after we coming back to the garden, we, of course, we process our herbarium voucher. And now we have uh, around 5,000 uh, herbarium voucher in, in our nursery, in our, in our garden, I mean. 
uh, with with this, uh, as, a, as I mentioned all the time, that botanical knowledge and the accumulation of all this knowledge, ethnobotany, um, community knowledge, plant species knowledge, plant taxonomy, identification, and just name it, everything that you can think about plant related, we has been recorded in our databases. So you can ask anything about any plants and you get the full information of the plant. And it, it's, a, it's a botanic garden, so every step is an experiment for us. Uh, 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 running different uh, experiments for propagation from cuttings or using growth chamber, if we're having difficulties in germinating some of the plants. Uh, our nursery hosts around 21,000 seedlings from around 300 species. Uh, I think the number may be now been increased because uh, this is a, a bit of old number. Uh, with this also, as I said, the knowledge in the databasing, um, each plant will get an accession number in the nursery to just uh, stay on top of any changes uh, about this plant. Um, uh, doing this and uh, germinating and propagating uh, plants, native plant species in the nursery, as I said, it's the first time to be done in Oman and maybe in the Arabia even. And so we, we are taking care of our cultivation protocols uh, uh, and trying to understand the, uh, what, uh, what is the requirement for this specific plant species from the soil mixes, irrigation regime, uh, climate uh, that should be, uh, the plants should be uh, put in the, in the nursery. Uh, so getting the, the, the condition right, do, do this plants need a polytunnel? Does it need a shade house or can be moved. So it, the plant is in a constant move from glass houses, polytunnels, shaded area, outside area in order to, to understand and to uh, adapt plant to the uh, uh, different condition in the nursery. Uh, of course, with the plants come insects, come uh, problems with the, <laughs> that, can, that may cause a uh, problem for our plants. So we have a strong team that taking care of uh, 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 checking our plants, uh, they are uh, pest-free, disease-free, and we are shifting to uh, uh, more eco-friendly and biological control in order to uh, to make sure that our plants are uh, growing uh, uh, growing safely. So uh, um, I'm sorry, I just jumped to uh, uh, that every plants that we have, uh, it's a huge collection. So the the garden. Uh, the garden will be ba uh, uh, will be uh, based on a, a habitat of Oman. So uh, each plant we germinate or we propagate or we produce in our nursery have been counted. So each circle in this map, it's a plant species with the name, with the location within our garden. So we are producing our plant according to the planting design in the in this stage. So each plant have its place, its unique place within the garden design. Uh, the, the Oman Botanical Garden is beyond plant. It is not only about plant cultivation and collection. It's about education and learning. And uh, since the beginning, uh, uh, we, uh, we maybe will get around four to 5,000 visitors each year. This is only to our nursery. And we didn't still start uh, uh, marketing to, to our visit. It's just uh, a small scale visit until now because the garden is still under construction. Uh, uh, most of our visit is from school groups that keep coming every year to visit the garden. They are interested uh, uh, to, to learn about the plants, to get hands on in uh, mixing soil uh, or planting the seeds or uh, taking the seedlings even with them. Uh, uh, we are reaching to people and we've been involved in many projects, even like building a small garden within a school or giving presentation or exhibition uh, or being in conferences. So we are trying uh, with, the, uh, with a, a small scale outreach program uh, for, for, the, for the community. Uh, for the conservation of plants in Oman, uh, the nursery have around 85 species uh, from the red data book of the country. And this is a good number for the, for the plant. And I will show you here 
uh, some examples of what we did in the nursery uh, regarding our plants. The Dracaena uh, cerealata, or the uh, dragon blood trees, it's an endangered regional endemic plant, and uh, it is a sensitive plant to the climate and to the declining population in the in the southern Oman. We have not, we are, we succeeded in germinating this uh, plant from seeds. And also we're rescuing this plant from construction. So we have around 200 plants in, in our production uh, in the nursery. Uh, Dainis Samira is, uh, um, I don't remember the Arabic name for it, but it is one of the endangered, also an endemic found on a few location uh, within Western Hajar Mountains and Eastern Hajar Mountain. And we have now around 600 plants in the, in the production. Uh, the aloe, one of the aloe species endemic also to the southern of Oman, we got only two plants, and now we have uh, around thousand plants of this, of this beautiful aloe in, in our collection. Uh, lavandula, uh, uh, one of the new discovered lavandula species of the country, uh, um, recently in two thousand nine, uh, the paper was published. Uh, uh, so, as this is to just tell you that that Oman still have many species that are waiting to be discovered. Uh, one of the huge projects that the, 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 the garden is working on is the plant rescue and translocation. And this is to be part of the conserving plant uh, from road construction. Uh, uh, this is a, a project that started in 2008, and this is in collaboration with the Ministry of uh, uh, Transport. Uh, uh, whenever there is a, a road to be built or a new building to be constructed, uh, or if we, uh, for example, notice uh, while we are in our field, there's a new road to be built, we will talk to the people responsible about the construction and just uh, try to plan with them in order to conserve or to save this plant and to rescue them from construction. So rather than cutting the plants and, uh, and killing them, we are being uh, rescuing the plants and transferring uh, uh, very old plants, hundreds of years old plants, to the garden, uh, um, temporarily planted, for example, if they are from the far in a, in a local nursery and then move it to the garden. Uh, for example, this is a, a mining uh, site in, in the south. And as you see, uh, the destructive effects of this uh, location and the effect on the uh, dressing the trees. Um, so this is a really uh, heavy plants and that grow on steep cliffs of the south in Oman. And our team uh, manually been digging the plants and trying to rescue it from uh, destruction. And uh, now they are safe and happy in our nursery. Uh, France, frankincense, hundreds and hundreds of trees have been destroyed during road construction. So we we try our, our best to save as much as we can from this tree. And we, uh, we've been giving these plants to the uh, local uh, communities uh, for the houses or um, any governmental institute that would like to have these plants within their uh, offices, for example. Also, we have many of them already in our nursery. Um, these are frankincense trees. Um, uh, these are some examples only of some of the projects that the garden is working on uh, in terms of conserving the plants. This is also an, a, a, co a collaborative uh, project with uh, Petroleum Development Oman, and here they are trying to have a new oil field and they are planning to have uh, many pipelines and roads and then they call us in, how can you help us in, <laughs> in trying to make the best of this uh, of this place. So we've been there, uh, we visited the place, uh, assessed it, and eventually we ended uh, digging the plants and uh, bringing them back to the nursery in order to see if they will be successful uh, germinating in our nursery. As we see that, as we know that the central desert is also one of the plants are sensitive to translocation, and we weren't sure if we will be successful in, uh, in uh, germinating the and bringing the plant back to the nursery or not, but this is, uh, uh, this is the only thing that we can do as the oil field will go on anyway. Uh, uh, from all what you heard that uh, um, the, the, the international world have been having many agreements, many uh, strategies, 
for biodiversity diversity conservation, and one of them is the Global Strategy for Plant Conservation, as part of the CWD uh, agreement. And this is to just to provide a framework uh, for all botanic gardens or uh, or botanical institutes uh, to work together in all levels to understand and conserve and use uh, uh, the wealth of plant diversity and to promote awareness about the importance of these plants. Uh, the, 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 it has, um, it's, it's, a, it's a scary sc <laughs> slide, but the, the global strategy for plant conservation has five main objectives with 16 targets. I will not talk about it in detail here, but I can give you some example about some targets that we are trying to hit in, in Oman Botanic Garden. The first objective of the, of the GSPC is the plant diversity is well understood, documented, and recognized. And target one saying that an online flora of all known plants. And of course, we cannot know a plant species is becoming unless we know that it exists. And although in order to have an online flora, we have to have a flora first, uh, a, full, uh, a full list of a flora in the country. And well, luckily that uh, the, there are four volumes of flora of Oman have been published and there's quite uh, other publication about Oman flora. But now we need, we need to translate this flora to uh, an online uh, platform. And uh, uh, also there is many uh, databases, online databases that talk about the uh, flora in the, the Middle East. And the most recent one is the plants of the Middle East. Uh, he, uh, that also talk about the um, diversity and the checklist of species in the uh, Arabian Peninsula, basically for, for now. And also the, the Oman Botanic Garden team now uh, also working on updating the Oman checklist. And hopefully also we'll soon we'll have in working in our uh, online uh, and eFlora for the garden. Uh, target two, uh, I'm saying an assessment of the conservation status for known plant species as far as possible to guide conservation action. And also uh, in 2015, the red list, the red data book uh, by uh, uh, Dr. Anand Padzel have been published. And uh, uh, here we, we talk about uh, all the plants that are under threat from, uh, uh, from many other threats that can uh, uh, affect our plant diversity in the country. So we, we reach this target. Uh, the target is regarding the important plant areas, basically. And uh, also we, we uh, I think a few years ago, the garden was a part of a bigger team uh, uh, that was trying to produce uh, um, as uh, a spatial strategy for Oman, a national spatial strategy for Oman, of Oman. And this is including all the natural, uh, uh, the natural component of the country and plants was uh, of course one of them. And uh, during that uh, workshop and the strategy, a map was produced identifying the most important plant areas in the country in order to, kind the, the, to guide the conservation and development for Oman. Also, target eight is uh, uh, saying that at least 75% of certain plant species should be in ex situ collection and uh, preferably in, 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 the, in, in the country of origin, which is here. We can say it's Oman Botanic Garden that has already 60 to 70% of the red list species, which is conserved as seeds or as a living collection. Uh, also, this is... Uh, mainly about the collaboration and uh, uh, capacity building. And Oman have been collaborating with many local and international institutes in order to, to run research in, in, uh, in order to understand our, our plants. And this is one of the studies that have been uh, studying the distribution of seven of the endemic species in the, in the central desert of Oman, trying to understand the distribution how they will be affected in the future with the increase, for example, in temperature or the climate change, which will help in uh, building the knowledge in where to plan our conservation uh, or our uh, reserve, for example, in the future. This is another project uh, trying to assess the Arabian dragon pea. It's done with a collaboration with many institutes also. Uh, the plant conservation uh, and sustainable development goals, this is a, a, a bigger umbrella to lead the uh, uh, 
the uh, conservation in all aspects and uh, uh, and uh, I will not talk about this uh, I think hopefully uh, maybe in another presentation or something but this is it will take a huge amount of time to explain but there is uh, uh, many publication publication and online online uh, data about linking uh, the uh, SDGs uh, with the uh, targets of the global strategy of land conservation in order to make sure that that all strategy to conserve biodiversity are linked together are working together toward the same targets um, so um and then basically plant conservation is uh, really difficult scientifically and technically and is expensive uh, it will require train stuff space facilities and uh, Patience, it is a long term commitment uh, that everybody should work together in order to reach to um, uh, to reach of what we're hoping uh, to communicate uh, to our environment and to, to the people. Um, for that, we have uh, Aman Botanic Garden, and uh, I think. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm reaching toward to the, the end of my presentation. I'll just leave you a few slides about uh, the, the garden. Uh, this is the, uh, the Amman Botanic Garden sites. Uh, and this is uh, to display all the native plants in their natural habitat. So we are going to have, uh, uh, of course, a visitor centers because the garden will be open for the public. Uh, visitor center to just uh, welcome our visitor and uh, we are going to uh, display our uh, southern plants in the southern biome. Of course, we need uh, uh, a controlled climate uh, uh, biome in order for southern plants to live in, in Muscat. Uh, so we have a huge southern biome uh, for the southern uh, uh, plants. Uh, the, the, uh, the visitor will have the uh, the, the time to go through all the plants, all the diversity going uh, into the southern biome. Uh, this is the uh, look of the southern biome from inside and uh, also the northern biome, which is, uh, I think, almost 60% um, ready uh, with the agriculture terraces that will show uh, the plants from Jebel Akhdar and uh, Jebel Shams, basically. And this is uh, giving the uh, colder temperature for the for the plants in order to survive. Um, the north, the north by them from inside, and the agricultural terraces that will showcase uh, uh, the cultivated plants from date palms, from any fruit plant or annual planting in in the country, and the habitat pavilion that will give you. Uh, uh, introduction and over, overview of the different habitats in the in the country. Uh, so uh, I hope you 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 visit us in the, in the garden soon, and uh, uh, I wish to see you all in in this uh, wonderful place. And uh, I think this is the the last slide of my presentation. Uh, thank you everyone for attending and. Uh, I hope I can. I gave you uh, a bit of summary about what's happening regarding the plant conservation in Amman Botanic Garden. Uh, thank you very much.